So what is the most positive and significant impact you've seen digital curriculum and content make in your school or district? And Darwin, we'll start with you. A teacher who was on our staff development team last year who couldn't imagine that, that she wanted to help lead this transformation to where we were going, so she went to go hide in a first grade classroom. Of course, she wasn't allowed to hide. Um, she wrote to me, um, one of our 500 or so teachers wrote to me and said, this is making a difference. The vision is coming true. This child who wouldn't speak to anyone because of the use of the digital content, because he could find something that he was excited about, this kind of a C ray, now his whole life turned on. I swear it made the whole school year worthwhile. So let's talk about since this journey and how do you see school evolving as digital curriculum and content become ever more sophisticated and even intelligent behind the scenes? The analytics for how we're measured, how we're going to be, what label our school is going to have, what the property values in our neighborhoods are going to be, that's all changing. Mm -hmm. I think almost everybody here is from Arizona except for the vendors. So I would tell you this, that, um, I'm sorry, it feels like a sermon about to come. I so do not want to be the king of the dinosaurs. I so do not want to be that. We are rocking 1985, Madeline Hunter's instructional, you know, essential elements of instruction. We got that better than anyone, Darwin. Ah, stop that. And so as, um, as we looked at, Arizona suspended its accountability system for two years. Why wouldn't you move heaven and earth to take advantage of that right now? Why wouldn't you? When is it going to be safer than now? It's not. It's not. Open the box. Open the box. And whatever you bet the farm on now is going to change in two years anyway. Open the box. I'm kind of committed to this. Um, that's from the superintendent. A superintendent from California came over to see what we were doing. Um, I know nobody in Phoenix ever comes. Actually, Mesa came to Yuma the other day to see what we were doing. The road really does go two ways. Um, I took him to this teacher's classroom. Uh, second year teacher from New York. Um, her name is Ashton. She's a fourth grade teacher. Well, Dr. Stifler, I was going to quit. And I told my mom, and she said, well, you could quit if you want. And then I came back, and I got it. I got it. And in her classroom, and I thought, this, this teacher, this superintendent's name is David. You cannot steal this teacher once she got it. So in her classroom, she's like, I'm not taking home papers to grade anymore. This is amazing. People have told me this could be possible, but I didn't believe this was possible. And teacher, other teachers and others are raving about her. And, and to the degree of personalization that she has gone already in her classroom, she's even abandoned, abandoned the kidney-shaped table in the corner where she's going to bring kids to. Right, so the whiteboard kids have taken, taken charge of a lot. She's using adaptive smart software to do some of the pieces. She has her whiteboard that's like this pyramid. She hooks it on her arm, and she just sits down by whoever she needs to sit down. And that's the one-on-one -on -one individualized help that those kids are getting there. It's, she's rocking it. She's not the only one that's rocking it because we're allowing that to happen and because we have great people who are willing to do that. The kids, they know some baselines on Achieve 3000, on Imagine Learning, on some of the other software that we're using that they have to do. She has choices. The kids go up to the board. She's monitoring the board. She can see where kids can do. Some of the choices look like old school kind of stuff, and there's a, there's a beach ball with math formulas on it, and the kids step outside and they toss that. And she has been brave enough to give up the control that she has to do all of that, to allow the kids to really own their learning. And so as I'm talking to, to people who get to make decisions, why wouldn't you let your teachers do that too? And why wouldn't you let your principals do that too? And how are you ever going to get to there if you, have, if you take principals through this pedantic process to get there? I don't believe you're going to. And it's a scary time to be a principal. I won't make principals say this out loud right now. I know a couple in the room, and they were awesome classroom teachers who never taught this way. 
they were awesome at Madeline Hunter or any of those other pieces, and that's how they got to be that's how they got to be educational leaders. And it is a new world. Do not strive to be king or queen of the dinosaur. 